Hi, I'm Jill Chivers from shopyourwardrobe.com. And I'm Imogen Lamport from Inside Out Style. And we were interested in this idea of the childhood messages that we bring with us into our adult lives and how we are influenced by those early experiences in terms of how we shop and how we dress and how we think about clothes, how we think about our own value and how we think about money when it comes to spending money on ourselves. And, and we thought it would be an interesting thing to talk about and, and ask you to, to think about your early messages in those areas. And, and you were telling me a, a really interesting story about your early experiences when it comes to clothing and style? Yeah, so when I was young, I wore mostly hand-me-downs. Um, my brother's hand-me-downs mostly because he was two years older, so I think it was convenient for my mother just to hand me his old t-shirts and pants. Um, and then also other people's hand-me-downs. So if some neighbour or somebody gave some clothes, then they're the clothes I got to wear. And a lot of the time I didn't like those clothes. They weren't my style. I didn't like the fabrics. I might not have liked the feel of them, but I had no choice but to wear them. And my mother would buy me one pair of brown lace-up school shoes every year and that was all I had to wear. Just that one pair? One pair of shoes. Um, and I remember you know, saying to my mum, why won't you buy me more shoes? Mm. And she turned around and she said, um, it's because your feet are growing too fast and it's a waste of money. Mm. And it wasn't actually until much later when I was trying to work out that why I was a bargain shopper, why I only could shop sales. And I started thinking about well, what was the messages I got when I was growing up that what I heard was not your feet are growing too fast. Mm. My message was is you have no value to spend money on. Mm. And so that resulted in me only buying sales clothes. Yeah. Like clothes are on sale and you know that I couldn't actually spend full price yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And also too, I think that the less you know about yourself and your body, often that there, that is a thing too where people say, I don't want to make an expensive mistake. And I've heard this many times with my clients where they're really scared of spending any money on anything. They'll spend $10 or $20, but they don't want to spend, a re, you know, like $100 on, say, a pair of like pants that they're going to wear every day mm. to work or, you know, whatever it might be yeah. because they've made expensive mistakes and they never want to do that again. It doesn't feel good when you've wasted money. Yeah. Um, and this is why I like to teach people about what does and doesn't work because I think, well, at least then you've got a little bit more knowledge. So your chance of making expensive mistake is much less. And do you um, have a, a memory of a particular item of clothing or, or series of items of clothing that was sort of pivotal, either good or bad when you were growing up? Um, so there was one, you know, so I, I did, ha my mother had to buy me a pair of shoes at one stage when I was about 16 <laughs> because it was part of a uniform. Well, we had to have some black shoes and I think I was probably 16 and so she took me out and she found a pair of patent leather Mary Janes and at 16 I did not want to wear a pair of shoes that a 10 year old, <laughs> Yeah. you know, they were appropriate for a 10 year old but not a 16 year old mm. and, and it was one of those things I remember saying to her but you know, I don't, don't like these shoes. Mm -hmm. And she said, but you've always said you wanted paint, and, you know. And I was like, but I, when I was 10, it's like I'm not 10 anymore. Yeah. And I think sometimes too people, parents in particular, may want to keep their children younger too because it scares them when your kids grow up. So and they're becoming adults. Um, so and it was something I remember, you know, she bought these. And I think I wore them twice and then I went down to, you know, the... St. Vincent de Paul, the shop, you know, the um, charity shop, and managed to buy myself a pair of stilettos. <laughs> but you were saying there was also a moment when you realised how different your mother's views were about clothing and style to to yours, and and that can be a difficult thing to recognise. I, I, I think it's okay that we are different to our mothers, and that yeah. our daughters are different to us. I I, I think, but it can, it can be quite. Um, a, 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 a moment yeah. to recognise how different you might be from your parent. And I think, you know, my parents came from very much a kind of war background in a way where it was all about practicality, usefulness and appropriateness. Yes. And it fit those categories. It didn't have to make you feel good. Yeah. It didn't have to have any sort of style. It didn't have to be in fashion. And particularly as a teenager, we go through a real social yeah. value at that time where we really want to be like our friends. Mm. And You see teenage girls walking along. This isn't true of all teenage girls, but certainly a lot of them. Yeah. And they seem to be wearing a version of each other's clothes yeah and mm. it's because it's the social value is very very strong at yeah. that time mm. and so therefore and, and it's something that parents need to understand too that that your kids want to fit in it mm. actually makes them feel good to fit in and if they stand out if you know they're too different it can make them very kind of psychologically uncomfortable I guess yeah um Versus especially as we get older, we tend to like to be the same as people less and less. Often mm. then we might go into a thing where we want to be different. 
Well, whole treaties have been written about clothing and identity, which yes. sounds like it might be the topic of another video, but yeah. there is certainly a relationship between clothing and identity. And, and is it, I mean, is there ever a period in your life when that is more important than when you're a teenager? So that I found when you told me that story, it was a very poignant um, story. I was very moved by you, you sharing that with us. And, and I think it's an interest, interesting thing for us all to think about what are our early moments and, and not just to capture that moment, which would have value in and of itself but to think about how it's affected us as adult women and the choices that we make and and what choices we can make from now because we we can make different choices even if our early beginnings didn't have everything in it that we wanted them to have yes mm.